My name is Matthew Wayne Selznick, and this is Sonatotem, episode 80. Hello, my friends. On this and every episode of Sonatotem, we talk about making stuff, mostly writing, finding success as we each define it for ourselves, and staying healthy and sane in the process. Who am I to be talking to you about such things? Well, I've been an independent creator, self-publisher, independent author, for many years, uh, since 2004 by some counts, since 1998 by other counts, since 1989 by still other counts and measures. Been making things, putting them out for people to buy and experience for a very long time. And yet, because everything is constantly changing, I try to approach what I talk about on this show from the perspective of an experienced beginner. As I've said in the past, it's not my first rodeo, but the damn bulls keep changing. So there's always more to learn, more to share, and that's, uh, that's what I do here. Every other episode, we feature a conversation with another creator. But this episode, and every other one that isn't one with an interview, it's just me talking to you, mostly about uh, my experiences since the last time we talked, and whatever might be on my mind as far as making stuff, finding success, and staying healthy and sane. And that's what we're going to do today. It is April 19th, 2023. It's a Wednesday, and I'm recording this from the lush and lavish studios of MWS Media in Southern California. Normally, the show comes out to the world at around noon every Wednesday. Today's not going to be that, because <laughs> it's uh, 1 o'clock <laughs> as I'm speaking to you on the very Wednesday. Things come up, right? Life happens. And... uh in a way, it, it, it doesn't matter much whether or not it comes out at noon or two or four on a Wednesday. Looking at listener statistics, yeah, the episode gets sent to a lot of different podcast aggregators the day it comes out, but listenership seems to be spread pretty evenly across the first seven days of a listen with a few more folks coming in in the second week and third week. I track statistics for the show seven days, two weeks, and four weeks, uh, just to see how things are going. And, and then I do cumulative uh, every, every month to go all the way back to the first episode, which I think was from 2018, if I remember correctly, for this, this version of Sonatotem. Anyway, so I'm not, I'm not beating myself up too much about the fact that the episode is going to be, quote, late, unquote, this time around. Today is an interesting day for a few different reasons. So first of all, I've been thinking a lot over the last week or so about what I would talk about on this Sonatotem episode number 80. One thing that's occurred to me is how, uh, how difficult it's been for me to actually write, actually dig in and create fiction. Now, some of those reasons are external, uh, circumstantial, you know, life stuff. But a lot of it is, is definitely psychological, mental, emotional. For example, I realized that I could totally carve out 12 hours, all told, over the course of a number of days to produce the last episode of Sonatotem, which featured an interview with the playwright Monica Cross. You can find that at mattselznick.com slash sonatotem-079, or of course, anywhere you get your podcasts. It's work and it's not always easy, but I can do that. I can carve out 12 hours in the course of a week to create one of these podcasts. Considering that 
my on average words per hour <laughs> rate when I'm writing fiction is anywhere between you know, 500 to 700 to 1200 words, depending on how things are going. Imagine how many words of fiction I could have written in those 12 hours. And yet I can't seem to find the space, not in the day, clearly the space is there, but in my head to sit down with uninterrupted focus, either internally or externally generated, and write even just 12 hours a week. So I've been thinking, why is that? And I realized that one of the things I like to say, so I've got a few things. <laughs> there are a few things that I like to say. They're almost catchphrases uh, in, in my creative life. One of them is, is that I make things for people who like the kinds of things that I make. The other is that sort of my, my mission as a creator is to add to the culture. The third thing is my definition of art, which is basically that when someone other than the person who made a thing experiences a thing, that's what makes it art. Now, here's the thing about that thing. <laughs> my sales, my book sales have been just atrocious for the last, I'm going to say six months or so. Just awful. And sales of the last three things that I've released are quite literally <laughs> non-existent. I think, again, we could say in the last six months or so. So what's happening is that I'm not reaching the people who like the kinds of things that I create. And if I'm not reaching them, the creations that I'm making are not art. And if I'm not reaching them, I'm not adding to the culture. And I think somewhere in my head, I've reached a point of futility. Uh, you know, and, and I don't mean to be overly dramatic about that. Simply that I'm starting to realize that it's very possible <laughs> that one of the reasons I'm not insisting to myself and to others that I spend time writing fiction every week is because there's no indication that it's going to be experienced by anyone. It's just fucking around. It's just creation for the sake of creation, which that's fine, but I've been doing other things, uh, fucking around learning obsidian and, uh, and I talked a couple episodes ago about being in the absorption phase of creativity where the sponge sucks in information and knowledge and experience as the flip side to when the sponge scrubs, to when the sponge works, right? That's uh, episode 78, I believe, mattselznick.com slash sonatotem-078. All this stuff will be in the show notes, by the way, for this episode, sonatotem 80 same idea, mattselznick.com slash sonatotem dash zero eight zero. Anyway, I can put out a podcast episode. I can dedicate the time to that because I do know that people are listening, that you're out there, dear listener. I can see it in the statistics. Week over week over week, there's about a mm, 12 to 25 percent increase in downloads of this show. So there's this steady, incremental growth. I'm reaching people. I'm making something for people who like the thing that I'm making. <laughs> and I don't know if, if, if we want to, I don't know if we want to elevate Sonatotem to the level of art, but at least my creative expression is being experienced by other people. I'm not shouting into the void. I'm not creating a podcast just for the sake of creating a podcast. And so I think that's one of the reasons that I can find that I can validate spending the time to create these things. Eight to 12 hours on an interview episode and yeah, maybe three to six hours on one of these episodes where I'm, I'm just talking to you. But I think somewhere subconsciously, well, and since we're talking about it, maybe not so subconsciously, I've attached a sense of futility to writing fiction. Today is the third anniversary of the last novel that I 
completed and wrote. It's the third anniversary of, of writing the end on that novel, finishing the first draft. And that book is Light of the Outsider. And I'm really proud of it. It's the best thing I've ever written, especially in terms of novels. It's my third novel, and it's better than my first novel, Brave Men Run, which everyone loved. It's better than Pilgrimage, my second novel, which, you know, not as many people read, but received some favorable response. This is the best thing I've written in terms of long form. And as I said, uh, it has not sold. <laughs> it's just sitting out there. <laughs> I wrote a novelette. That was a follow-up to Light of the Outsider, The Perfumed Air at Kowanantag Bay. And outside of novels, this novelette was one of the most personal and one of the most personally affecting works that I've ever completed, ever published. It's a good piece of writing, too. It's a good story. But again, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I, I also put out a nonfiction book, Indie Author Marketing Infrastructure. Same deal, um, a little bit of sales at the very beginning and then uh, nothing since then. Now that one, I have not really promoted as much. So uh, uh, that's on me. And honestly, the sales for all of these things, that's all on me. I'm not whining that people aren't just blindly discovering, reading and praising the things that I've written. I have not uh, invested as much time and energy in marketing these things as I could or should. And it's a self-fulfilling kind of uh, uh, negative feedback loop. The more time that goes on, the less motivated I am to promote these things because try as I might, try as I would prefer not to give a damn about what anybody thinks, I'm not getting the validation. So I'm, I'm not all that keen on, um, well, let's be blunt, on exposing myself to further pain. <laughs> I think that's, that's the, the uh, most honest way to put it, right? If you put something out there, if you speak and what you say, at least you think it's important and no one hears and no one responds and you tend to stop speaking up. And I think that's what's happened with my fiction, which believe me, this is not going to be just an episode where I spend a half an hour just whining about woe is me about the state of things. I know what needs to change and having the willpower to change is, is one thing. However, the other thing that's been happening lately, I recognize, right? I'm reluctant to use my voice because no one is hearing it. But you know what? People sing in the shower all the time. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Kind of concurrently, and I guess this is just my subconscious talking to me, kind of concurrently with all these thoughts about, oh, hmm, maybe, maybe this is why I haven't been dedicating the time to fiction. I've had this kind of a vision of a, uh, a mug <laughs> with a little saying on it. This happens to me periodically, like every few years or so. I come up with an idea for a product. And because it's so relatively easy to create merchandise these days and offer it up without really any upfront costs to oneself, I went ahead and created it earlier this week. And you can see it if you go over to mattselznick.com slash merchandise. I just came up with this design based around this phrase. And the phrase is, play with your gifts today. And accompanying that phrase, play with your gifts today, is a little icon of a, of a box that's open with some confetti flying out of it. And on the two sides of the box that you can see, one side has a brain and the other side has a heart right? Play with your gifts today. Your brain and your heart, those come together and they make your creativity, your imagination, your inspiration. Those are your gifts. Everyone has them. No one's creative expression is the same as anyone else's. Every one of us has that gift, but we don't play with them necessarily every day. We are Conditioned to think of that as a privilege, as a luxury, or 
and I'll say and slash or in my case as something that really is only worth doing if there's going to be some validation. So I made this mug and yeah, it's a thing that I created that I was able to put out there in the world. I shipped something this week. It's not writing, but I shipped something. I made something, took it from my brain and my heart and I put it out there and now it's a thing that you can hold in your hand. And sure, I resist the urge to check and see if there have been any orders made, <laughs> but also I haven't really talked about it until now. I posted it on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, but we all know how that goes. There's only a chance that a percentage of your friends and followers are going to see such a thing. Later today, time permitting, and if not tomorrow, I will tell my mailing list about it as well. Maybe there'll be a few people there who'll pick it up. But I did it, right? I made the thing. You can get it as an 11-ounce mug for $12 or a 15-ounce mug for $15, you know, plus shipping and handling, whatever. I make, I don't know what it is, like maybe $6 for every sale. It's only available in the U.S. right now. Sorry about that, folks uh, outside of the U.S. If you really want one, reach out to me and and... I'm sure we can work something out. But that phrase, play with your gifts today, and the, the, the drive to make it into something, I've been writing that along with a level of morosity and despondency over uh, the state of my written works. And then today, I, I didn't even realize it, you know, I didn't even realize it until I got notified of the fact Today is the third anniversary, as I said, of finishing my last major work, Light of the Outsider, my third novel. Although, to be honest, writing the novelette, The Perfumed Air at Kowanantag Bay, was almost as much mental and emotional work. So, you know, this is where I'm at right now. And, and maybe this is where you're at or have been at <laughs> or, you know are at risk of being at. <laughs> I've kind of painted myself into a corner by my definition of art being creativity that's experienced by someone other than the person who created the thing. I've hitched my creative wagon to being dependent upon other people experiencing it. And that's probably, uh, that's probably a mistake. Do I know how to turn that mindset around? Honestly, no, not exactly. Practice probably comes into play. Faith comes into play. And I've talked about that on this podcast before. I'll try to track down some specific episodes. And those will be in the show notes for this episode over at mattselznick.com slash sonatotem. 080 for this episode, episode 80. I simply don't have the faith that what I make is actually worth the time and the effort that goes into making it because those things aren't being experienced by others. So that right there, I think, is wrong. I know it's wrong. It's hobbling, so it must be wrong. If it wasn't wrong, I wouldn't really care, <laughs> right? I wouldn't be talking to you about it. So, Let's broaden this out. Not only what can I do to change this, but what might you do? And I'll use examples again from my life. I've known for weeks, maybe months, that I need to schedule a bunch of social media posts talking about all of my catalog, sort of on a rotating basis. I need to take two or three or four hours or however long it fucking takes to write up a shit ton of tweets and a bunch of uh, Instagram posts and some Facebook and the same kind of things I would do for a client, right? Promoting my works of fiction and nonfiction, which by the way, it's never been easier or more accessible to get my eBooks. You can name your own price with a minimum price of a dollar. You can name your own price for any one of my eBooks, novels, and short, short stories and story collections and anthologies and nonfiction books when you buy direct at mattselznick.com slash books. I've done a lot to make it easy 
for people to consume what I create. Except get the word out. So there's something solid that I can do. I can put it on the agenda that every day I spend an hour writing and scheduling social media posts. I can reach out to my mailing list and remind them of what's out there. I don't talk to them near enough. And then I'm surprised when no one responds when I do. (laughs) You see a pattern here? (laughs) So I could absolutely and certainly be more proactive about getting the word out, especially in ways that don't cost anything but time. That's important. I've talked periodically over the last few months on this show about being less precious. But the one thing that I didn't apply that to was my own attitude toward the act of making things. All this time, I've been connecting the validity of creation with validation from external sources, from you, dear listener, and from readers, past and present and future, except as we've talked about, there really aren't any present. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's like running with a rock in your shoe and then complaining that you, 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 you can't really run anymore because of the rock in your shoe, but never getting around to actually maybe changing shoes, right? Or taking your shoes off or getting the damn rock out of your shoe. So I guess I made that mug with its little slogan, play with your gifts today to remind myself to have time every fucking day to be creative. In fact, the first and so far only person who's ordered one of those mugs is me because I want to have one in my hand. I want it to be looking at it <laughs> when I'm drinking my goddamn morning coffee. And I want to tell you if you're if you're experiencing that, if you're feeling discouraged or feeling a a, a lack of motivation because of the feedback you're receiving or not receiving regarding your creative endeavors. This is really all we need to do is decide that it doesn't, not that it doesn't matter, but it's that it's not the point. Show up anyway. Make stuff anyway. For yourself. And remember to spend the time smartly, right? Intelligently. Getting the word out for the stuff you ship. And don't stop shipping. You have an idea. Make the damn thing, like I did with that mug. Now, granted, making a mug took a couple of days, not the weeks and months and sometimes years that it takes to write a novel. But get to done, right? Ship something. Tell people about it. Keep telling people about it, no matter whether or not you're getting the amount of response that you hoped for, dare I say, need. This is just another way of saying once again, over and over again, that we just have to do the thing. That if we don't do the thing, there's no, there's, there's no result at all. I've allowed my creativity, my production, to be wed to my self-esteem, which I strongly suspect is not uncommon, but it, it's my turn, or maybe it's always been for me. But we can't. We have to play with our gifts every day. Because no one else, no one else has the voice, the vision, the imagination, the heart, the mind that we each do. Nobody's going to make a thing like you make. I hope you listen to me. I'm going to do my best to listen to myself. Let me know how it goes. Hey, if you've enjoyed this or any other episode of Sauna Totem, I've got three things that I would love for you to do for me to help show your support for the show. The first thing is, if you haven't already, wherever it is that you get your podcasts, please subscribe for free to Sauna Totem. Just click that subscribe button for Sauna Totem wherever it is that you might have heard this episode, wherever it is you get your podcasts. Next, wherever it is that you get your podcasts, I hope you'll take just a moment to rate and review Sauna Totem. Tell the world why you enjoy the show and why other people 
should listen to it and subscribe for free. And finally, if you'd like to go the extra mile and you have the will and the means, I hope you'll consider becoming a patron of Sonatotem and my other creative endeavors. For just $5 a month, not only will you be a member of the Multiversalists community of writers and readers and creators, you will receive all kinds of special access, perks, and exclusive content, not least of which is the uncut, unproduced edition of every episode of Sonatotem. Just go to mattselznick.com slash b-a-patron or visit patreon.com slash mattselznick and pledge just $5 a month to support the show through your patronage. That's it. If you can do one or two or all three of those things, you'll be really helping the show and helping me reach more people with the Sonatotum mission of making stuff, finding success, and staying healthy and sane in the process. Thanks. Friends, can I take a moment to thank the folks who have steadfastly and consistently provided their own validation as members of the Multiversalists member community. Chuck Anderson, Amy Bowen, J.C. Hutchins, and Ted Leonhardt. You just heard how you can join them for $5 a month when you become a Multiversalist over there at mattselznick.com slash b-a-patron. Thank you, Chuck, Amy, J.C., and Ted. As always, dear listener, I would love your feedback on today's episode or any episode of Sonatotum. Perhaps the easiest thing you can do is to send me an email at matt at mattselznick.com or record a little voice message on your phone and email that to matt at mattselznick.com. You can also, of course, go to mattselznick.com slash sonatotem-080 to see the show notes for this episode and to leave a comment directly there. Sonatotem is spelled S-O-N-I-T-O-T-U-M. mattselznick.com slash sonatotem-080 for this episode, episode 80. Have you found yourself stuck in the trap of associating your validity with validation when it comes to creativity? Have you been able to embrace the idea that we need to play with our creative gifts every single day? Or is that hard for you? What are you doing about it? How can I help? Let's talk about it. Send me an email. Once again, matt at mattselznick.com. Or send a voice message to that same email address. Or leave a comment at mattselznick.com slash sonatotem-080. It's going to be all right. We all just have to fall in love with what it is we have to offer once again. My name is Matthew Wayne Selznick. Take care. Thank you.